director of Jackson's Martin Luther King Jr. Center and the varsity head football coach at Jackson High, Antonio Parker. Hi, Antonio. Hey, Bart. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Busy. Busy. And today is a special day. Today is Antonio Parker's birthday. Oh, they found out. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Happy birthday. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, I guess I can ask. How old are you today? Uh, 20 plus 20. <laughs> oh, wow, it's a milestone. <laughs> it's a milestone, yeah. So what are you going to do for your birthday? Uh, obviously, coach a football game tonight, and so I wouldn't have it no other way. Coach a football game tonight. The JV football team is going to play against Hazlitt tonight, and then uh, probably celebrate with my family on Saturday. And so, uh, but enjoying the 20 plus 20 birthday so far today. Just went to lunch with my co-workers uh, for the City of Jackson, the Parks and Rec Department, Kelly Hoover, and Andrew Sargent, and Suzanne Whitehead and Mason and uh, Julie Ridgebrot. So I uh, got a chance to celebrate with my coworkers. And so it was fun. Went to Rocky Tops. Nice. Well, happy birthday. Great. Thank you. Appreciate great it. Great to have you here on your birthday. Uh, tomorrow night, uh, it'd be neat if you won the, the varsity game on, mm -hmm. on birthday week. Uh, what does it look like to you? You've got Hazlitt. Got Hazlitt. Got a good team coming. Got to go to, got to, go to Hazlitt. Really good team up there. They've got a good solid team to play. And so they're they are five and three. And they're looking to uh, make their final push to the playoffs, and we're looking to win and try to get into the playoffs. So I think it's going to be make for a good game. And so uh, we've played Hazard really well the last couple of years, and so looking forward to seeing what happens. Uh, Jackson High and Hazlitt was the first ever football game on JTV 23 years ago. Oh, wow. Yeah. How about that? Oh, what a dot. Mm, uh, we just had highlights that first week we were on, <laughs> but it was, it's, this, it's this week. Gotcha. Yeah. So... Um, you guys are four and four going to the into the final game, and it's not the way it used to be. Six wins guaranteed you a playoff spot. That's mm -hmm. not anymore. So we're, nope. there's still a chance. Still a chance. So now it's based on playoff points, and so uh, based on it's, it's a formula between wins and you know strength of schedule and all the stuff that follows that. And so uh, right now we've kind of put ourselves in a spot to where we we've, we've got a we've got a win to at least have a chance to get in. And so we need some other teams that are in front of us to, to, to do some favors and not win. <laughs> and so uh, if that happens, we have, we have a chance to get in for sure. Well, I, I think you've had you know, some great games, obviously some, some wins, but uh, in some close uh, games, we've got, I think the best game of the year was the Pink Viking gotcha. game. And that carries special meeting to all of your players and to you. Yes, for sure. Like this year was, was, was a little bit personal for me more than ever. Uh, I've coached at Jackson High for, I've been coaching at JPS for 20 years and been at Jackson High for the last 13. This year was way more meaningful for me in the Pink Viking game. My grandmother uh, was diagnosed with cancer uh, uh, back in, I think, late, late 2022, early 2023. And so uh, playing that game this year for her was, was, was meant a lot. And so uh, that's one of the reasons why we kept it going and we'll continue to keep it going. Very emotional. Uh, ceremony for the game as those Vikings march with family members and, and mm -hmm. some of the people that actually uh, sure. are on the back of their jerseys. Yep. Yeah, so as you can see all the pictures there. So no, it was really, really, really meaningful, man. It was, it was, it's good to see all the people come out, obviously to support the program, but more than anything else, to support those who's fighting cancer and those who have fought cancer and to get people together again for a good cause to raise money for local, uh, local patients that are, that are going through cancer. That's, I think, the coolest thing, that the money stays right here and goes to the families. And yep. it's for things like they have to drive to the hospital, mm -hmm. they have to drive to Ann Arbor. Uh, yeah, yep. and so we'll look forward to, we normally give that, we normally get back with Henry Ford uh, sometime close, closer to, pretty, pretty close to the winter, early spring, and we'll donate a check to Henry Ford and, their, and the cancer center and look forward to hopefully that it'll affect a lot of families. Very nice. Well, thanks to all the Vikings and everyone that supported that event. Thank you. We have a busy fall at the MLK Center. Yeah, we are we are rocking and rolling at the MLK Center. And so uh, we got events galore happening over there between our youth program after school and our adult programming, our adult programming going on and our senior program. Uh, I want to make sure I shout out my the staff over there, uh, Roy Ryan, who does our senior program, and Alfonso Boutre and Andre Walt, who runs our youth and adult programming, uh, does a, they do a great job. And so they do a great job making sure the center stays in the way it needs to go. And I, I'm able to, fortunate enough to be the guy that's the director there, but those guys do a great job with our programs. 
Yeah, and we've got uh, a few things that we want to get uh, on everyone's calendar. Coming up on November 4th, what is this banquet? So this is called Creating Sparks. And so uh, Latruvia Gwynn, uh, Jackson resident from Jackson, uh, we both had an idea years ago to get a space for our young girls in our community to come speak, talk, uh, get some self-esteem, uh, be able to deal with trauma, be able to, to be, know how to be young, better young women. And so uh, this program was created two years ago, and we're in the second year of the program. And so the young girls come to the center every Tuesday from 6 to 8. And so we've been running this program for two years. And it runs, it runs just like a school year. It runs nine months out of the year. And then they take a three-month break and they pick back up. So this is the second year of the program. Uh, tickets are still available. We're still looking for sponsors for the program on November 4th at the King Center. And so it's a really, really good program. And it's, it's really great to see those young ladies get, get, get the crowns they deserve. What ages are the uh, young ladies in this program? They, uh, they start at 11 and they go all the way 11 up to 16. Mm. Yep, so it's a really, really good, it's a really, it's a really, really nice program to see our young ladies come to the program and, and get a chance to get acknowledged and be able to have somebody to talk to and have people to talk to in the mm. community. And so uh, other, other women in the community help reach out and they help create what they need to be in terms of what it looks like to be a young lady, how to present yourself, how to deal with trauma, how to get self-esteem, you know, how to deal with all your past issues. And so just finding a way to make sure our, our, our young girls in our community have access to, to those resources. Yeah, and that age group, uh, it's the I love to dress up age group too. No, for sure, 100%. <laughs> and so, and they're still looking for gently used dresses also. And so it's, it's a great program and I look forward to seeing it all the time happen. I don't get a chance to see it as much with my busy schedule in the evenings, but, it, but it's a really, really great program. Well, we have had some beautiful upgrades to the MLK Center in the last uh, two or three years, but yes. you you want to do more? Yeah, so more is on the horizons, man. And so we're 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 seeking some community output coming up November first, uh, Wednesday at the King Center at five thirty. Uh, looking to update the uh, looking looking at possible getting the, the playground structure and the pavilion uh, updated. And so uh, that's a big big project coming up the pipe here. And so if, if everything comes through like it should. Uh, we, we, we could really get some things going for our program. And so uh, we're hooking up with the Community Foundation and some different partners and looking forward to uh, updating our equipment at the King Center. And so new, new playground shelter and equipment and possibly some ec adult exercise equipment. So looking forward to some community output input in, into what we need to do at the King Center and what they want to see. Well, the playground uh, structure is uh, very popular, but like the one at uh, uh, Loomis Park, there mm -hmm. is uh, a life. Yeah, I mean, that playground structure that's there now was installed, and I believe, in 2004. Mm -hmm. And so it's about a 20-year lifespan there, and I think it's held up pretty good. And so <laughs> looking, looking <laughs> to see, it's about time for some new ones. Although that one is fine, uh, I think it's time for, for some updates. And so uh, that one is fine, but like you said, everything has a life to it, and it's 20 years old. and. It gets, it's been 20 years of plan, and so a lot of kids have played on that structure, and it's created a lot of good memories. Yeah, and the picnic shelter, there's a lot of events that spill out of there. I think you could use a bigger, bigger picnic shelter. For sure, shelter. I mean, you have the South Side Reunion, you got all the family reunions that happen in the summertime, we got baseball and softball happening, we're doing stuff under the picnic shelter, so it's a lot of things that happen at the center, man. I mean, the center is absolutely rocking at the moment. I mean, we are busting at the seams with programs and events and birthdays and anniversaries and you name it, and the center mm -hmm. is absolutely rolling. And so some wonderful things happen at the center, but they won't happen without the staff that work there with me. Yeah, it's amazing you get to uh, do as much as you do because really the building, it's a small building yeah, for small as much building. as you yeah. go yeah. on. And so we, we've just learned over the years, man, they really get creative with the space we have. You know, yeah. between the gym, the Flamingo Brown Room, and the Tony Dungeon Room, we just, we just really, really been able to be fortunate enough to be creative. And then uh, with the addition with the uh, weight room with the Al Glick uh, Fitness Center, that's been a huge success. So also, I want to make sure that that happens. And you know, so we we have community members that come down in the mornings and throughout the day that are able to use the fitness center. You know, and it's, it's I think it's really fun to see even well he won't say it when he comes on here, but Jonathan Green, the city manager, he goes down and uses the weight room three four times a week. And I think it's really sweet that you know the city manager uses uh, the facility. You know, and mm -hmm. it's like why would I go pay for a membership when there's a gym in my in the place that I run, you know. So uh, it's really good to see people like people in our community. It's really an extremely diverse, you know. It's it's all people from all, all walks come to that center, and so it's really fun to see, and it's really good to see the, the the center be used at its full function, you know. Between you could go from having a gym full of kids to the next day having a repast, the next day having a 
uh, a, a banquet, you know, so we've mm -hmm. all over the moon in terms of events and places and stuff we're doing. So there's no shortage of what we do. Yeah, it's hu huge outside. Uh, we've got the uh, MLK Quarter Improvement uh, Authority. They, yes. They're having another, uh, I think, a resource. Yep, having a resource fair, I believe, October 30th. Uh, that's from 3 to 5.30. Uh, the MLK Authority meets down at the King Center every fourth Thursday at 5.30. And so they've been doing some really, really good things the last couple of years and looking to continue to improve the MLK corridor. And so uh, this resource fair is going to be for small businesses and people in the community to come to come see what access they need and what, and what needs to be done in our community. And so, again, the corridor is doing some awesome things. So just one of, as you can see, just one of the many things that the King Center is doing in terms of hosting events. You know, we're, we're doing a lot down there. A lot is happening. And so mm -hmm. it's really, really good to see uh, our community using the center at its full function, what it's meant to be for. Uh, Antonio, with the restarting of the uh, college classes from uh, JC, what's, mm -hmm. what's, what's the uh, participation? Uh participation is okay. It's a little, little smaller than what they expected, but I think that kind of comes with the territory, you know. Uh, it's still kind of foreign to some people in terms of like, oh, wait a minute, I can take, <laughs> I can take college guys at the King Center. So a little smaller than what they expected, but it's still going though. And so uh, I think some classes will continue to pick up and things will continue to pick up and go through. But again, being able to use the center at its full function, you know, resource fairs and uh, creating Sparks events and the input for the community playground. And now you talk about college classes. So just a number of things that things happen at the King Center and, and with the space we have and being able to be creative and use those spaces. Yeah, so any of the things uh, Antonio talked about, if you're interested, pop in, stop by. And if you haven't seen it... Uh, Come down and see us. Yeah. <laughs> Great to have you here. Thanks for coming on your birthday. No problem. I've got to be coming on my birthday. That's, that's a good thing. We should make it an annual thing now. 20 plus 20. What do we have for, uh, I'm sure we have, a, we have a gift for you somewhere okay, here. I would right? appreciate we'll, it. That'd be sweet. We'll uh, get that out and uh, send you on your way. Uh, the director of the MLK Center and varsity football coach at Jackson High, Antonio Parker.